how to hear God's voice. Today I want to talk about how to make sure you heard God right. How to make sure you heard God right. There was a lady, she was slurping soup. And she hears someone say, shh. So she stops and she says, okay. Then she hears a guy stay in the booth behind her say, uh, how was your day? Pretty good, she responds. The man says, how did you do on the test? Okay, but I did not get my grade back yet. The guy says, uh, I am sorry, I'm going to have to call you back as a person is answering all my questions that I have for you. Has that ever happened to you before? You thought someone was talking to you, but they weren't? They were on the phone, of course, these days, you know, with all the... You never know who's, who's talking to who. Are they talking to themselves? Are they talking to God? Are they talking to somebody on the phone because of the, you know, inner, in-ear things? And, but that happens. Maybe uh, you were walking through the lobby here at church or whatever, and you thought someone was waving at you, but they were waving at the person behind you. This happened to me before. I'm like, oh, well, Brad Pitt or somebody, somebody must be back there because... Otherwise, they would be waving at me, of course. I mean, but you kind of feel a little bit embarrassed, right? Uh, and so you're going, you know, I wonder if uh, when God is speaking to me, am I really hearing from God? It, maybe I'm wrong, just like I was wrong about that other person speaking to me. And if that ever happens to you, you thought you heard from God, and then you found out later, well, no, I think I missed that one. He really wasn't talking to me. And if that happens a few times, then you're a little bit apprehensive to whether God is really speaking to you, and uh, your faith can, uh, can, you know, languish a bit. So, is, so what we're going to talk about today, how to make sure you heard God right, is the impression from God... Is it from God or is it someone else? Uh, let's, let's see what we can talk about when we talk about an impression from God. You ever heard anybody say, you know, I really feel impressed that the Lord is saying. I feel impressed that, you know, God is giving me this direction. And we can call it many different things, but for our purposes, we'll call it an impression. We can call it an inward witness, an inward knowing, we can call it a leading, all these different things. But so that's what we're talking about. We're talking about hearing God's voice. And I'll say it again as we get into the scripture here. But a lot of times we think that when God is going to speak to us, it's going to be some voice that comes from out here somewhere. And we do see that in the scriptures. It does happen, but that is not 99%, maybe 99.99% of the time. That is not how God is going to speak to you. Because God is not out there. The Bible, I mean, he is out there. But God is in you, and he speaks to you spirit to spirit. He says, know ye not, you're a temple of the Holy Spirit. He comes on the inside of you. That's where he dwells. He'll speak to your spirit. And sometimes it'll be like an impression or an idea, something coming up uh, that will, you'll become cognizant of it with your brain, with your mind and your understanding. So let's look at 1 John 4, verse 1. It says, dearly loved friends, don't always believe everything you hear. Just because someone says it is a message from God. Test it first to see if it really is. So this scripture tells us that we need to test and make sure of the leading of God, of God's voice speaking to us. Test it first. If someone says, thus saith the Lord, God is saying, well, Hopefully, they're right on. Hopefully, it's God speaking to you from them and from God. But test it first. So this is the scripture. So this is just as important as God speaking to us. Is God saying, test what he is saying to see if it really is God. 
So an impression then is when God's leading you in your spirit. And the definition for the word impression is an idea, feeling, or opinion about something or someone. Especially one formed without conscious thought or on the basis of little evidence. Kind of sounds like faith. And when we hear from God, we have to sometimes take it by faith. And it's based upon little evidence, right? It's based upon maybe not even formed with conscious thought. But we feel an impression. We feel a leading. So sources of impressions then. So we've got to test it. We've got to make sure it's God. But let's, let's go back to that verse. In the first part, it says, uh, says that it is a message from God. God gives us messages. God speaks to us today. And there are sources of impressions. And we get information, impressions. We get leadings. We get words. We get what we think might be God speaking to us from different places. So here's some sources of impressions we may get. The first one is myself. Myself. And it says it in Proverbs 14, 12. It says, before every man there lies a wide and pleasant road that seems right, but ends in death. In other words, we may be impressed by our own wants, our own desires, our own thoughts to do something that is not God leading us. It is not God's message for us. Now, we don't discount the, the, the desires that we have. Because the Bible tells us if we delight ourselves in the Lord, he will give us the desires of our hearts. So it's a. But if you're delighting yourself in the Lord, it's easier to hear from God. It's easier to have the desire that God puts in there. Right. And so uh, so we don't discount any desires we may have. They might be the leading of the Lord. And he puts those desires in us many times. Now, it's not bad to want something, right? But we can't let our wants override what God is leading. Sometimes we will want things that God says to wait on or no, or, uh, you know, it's not his plan. So we have to learn to test that desire, that impression that we have, that want that we have. You know, have you ever heard stories or, or maybe you know of situations where a guy tells a girl, God told me I'm to marry you. Right. Has that ever happened? Uh, maybe you've heard about it happening. But <clears throat> most of the time, that's just the guy's insecurities saying, you know what? I need to play the God card so that I can win this lady over. And uh, I mean, God maybe said that to him, but if God doesn't say it to the young lady or to the girl. So if God's big enough to tell the guy, he's big enough to tell the girl, right? I mean, God can speak to both and confirm that test it, <laughs> see if it is God, right? So just because they say God told them does not mean he's told you. There's a lot of times people say, God is saying this, God is doing this, God wants you to do this or whatever, and it could just be what they think. And a lot of times it might be just what you think. And so that is the, the testing that we need to make sure of. So we're talking about where do some of these impressions come from? They come from myself uh, sometimes. It can, can come from God, of course. It says in Job 33, 14, it says, for God does speak. Now one way, now another, though man may not perceive it. So that's the thing. Are we perceiving the voice of God? Are we that impression that we're getting, that inward knowing that we're getting, that leading that we're feeling? Is that God speaking to us? For God does speak. I think we should just let that sink into our hearts. For God does speak. God does speak. God does speak. A lot of times we're going, is God speaking? Where is he? It seems like I'm not hearing. As it says there, though man may not 
perceive it. It may seem to be difficult to hear from God, but does, it doesn't mean that he's not speaking. So let's listen for his voice and uh, know that he does want us to be led of the Spirit of God and receive his direction and his help. So it can come from the impression can be God. And then thirdly, we see that the impression can come from Satan. Right? So it says in 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen, it says, And no wonder, for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. In other words, he will deceive believers. He will make it seem like he is a messenger of God, that he is God speaking to people. And he can convince people that the impression is from God, but it's not. And a lot of times he will take things, twist it. And that's what he always does from the very beginning. He said, did God say? Did he really say that? Is that what he really said about to Adam and Eve? You know, that that you would surely die if you eat of this tree. So uh, so he's very clever. He is the, you know. He's the master of lies, and he will deceive even the elect, even those who have received Jesus as their Lord and Savior. So you have to test where's this coming from. Um, so how do you test impressions? First one is, does it agree with the Bible? We talked a little bit about that last week, that God speaks to us through the Bible That is God's voice. And so how do you test impressions that you get from the inside and in your spirit and to, comes, you know, uh, bubbling up into your mind, so to speak. And it seems like you're hearing from God. And how do we test these impressions? Well, does it agree with the Bible? Very simple, very easy. Uh, test it. So God, give me some scriptures to back up what I believe you're saying to me. God, reveal to me from your word. That uh, we're on the right track here. It says in Luke 21 verse 33. It says heaven and earth will pass away. But my words will never pass away. See the word of God. is going to remain forever. We can stand on the word of God. It is immovable. It is a rock that we can depend on. And if. We can get an impression from God, a leading from the spirit, because God's spirit is speaking to us. God is wanting to direct us and help us and give us the answer that we're asking for. If we lack wisdom, he says, ask that he would give you wisdom. The reason you don't have wisdom many times is because you don't ask. He wants to speak to you. He wants to give you direction in your life. So the best test is the word of God, where we know God has already spoken. He's already said these truths. So God does not lead you to do something that is contrary to the written word of God. Because if he did, then we couldn't trust him. He'd be a, a liar. But God is not a man that he should lie. He is truth. You know, there's a lot of times trends, popular things come and go. So we need to stand true to the Bible. And uh, not just go with what's popular or what the latest, um, you know, new cool doctrine is or something like that. What is the Bible saying to us? And then a lot of times, sometimes people say, well, the Bible, you know, contradicts itself. Well, what they're really saying is the Bible contradicts what I want <laughs> for, for what I would like it to say for me. Uh, and... Uh, you can say that about anything. You can, you can pull things out of context and say, oh, I'll see, you know, it says this over here. It says this over here. But let's get the whole word of God. And we can test the word by other scriptures in the word and find out what the Bible is truly saying. So, so that's another whole subject of Bible, uh, how, to, how to study the Bible. But some say the Bible, um, you know, that they don't want to believe the Bible because 
And the real issue of why they don't believe the Bible is because that means they're going to have to change. Right? And so a lot of times we dismiss the Bible, we dismiss what it's saying because we don't want to have to conform or to submit or to surrender to God's truth. We want to do it our way. And, uh, you know, really God's got the best for you in mind. He wants you to prosper, be blessed, to be free from the destruction that sin and walking away from God brings. And so uh, he's wanting you to obey the Bible because that is God speaking his truth in the right way for us to go so that we will receive all the benefits and blessings of our relationship with God. So, you know, there was a kid, he was praying nightly for a new bike. God, please give me that new bike that I want. Oh, I want this new bike. And so he keeps praying nightly, but it seems that the bike never came. He never got what he was praying for. So one day he saw a bike like he wanted. So he just took it. And then he says, well, I'll just take the bike. Because that means this must be God. It's here. It's available for me. This person doesn't really need it. I mean, you know, I need this bike. I've been asking God for this bike. So they rationalized that, you know, God must be wanting them to have the bike. And, uh. And I can just ask for forgiveness afterwards, after I stole the bike. Well, Lord, he'll forgive me. But isn't that true about how a lot of times that we do things? Well, this may not be really what God wants, but, you know, I deserve this or whatever. And so you go for it and you go and do about it the wrong way and you say the wrong thing or you somehow steal or hurt someone or something And I will just ask for forgiveness. Well, he may forgive you, but the Bible says don't test the Lord like that and don't uh, keep doing evil because you know that he will forgive us. But uh, you'll still probably suffer the consequences for your actions, even though God may forgive you. We can ask God to forgive us all day long and all night and all week and all month and all year. But it does not protect us and it does not keep us from getting addicted, getting pregnant, getting fired, getting embarrassed, getting jailed. Because those consequences can still play out even though God forgives you and uh, he will want to lead you away from these things. You know, I can, you know, be flying down the highway going, you know, 20 miles over the speed limit and say, God you know, protect me from the getting a ticket, protect me from this or whatever. And I hope he does. But uh, if the police is there and they got the radar on you, you're probably going to get a ticket. So, well, God will forgive you and everything, but I still got to pay the ticket. You know, I still kind of have to go. But, you know, I I really got to get there. This is really important, God. I mean, you know, if I'm late, then, well, God... If it's that important, God would have helped you get there earlier by getting started earlier, right? I mean, just uh, be led by the Spirit. God's saying you need to start right now. So anyway, that's just some examples of what we do to justify and we get away from the truth of the Bible. And so we need to test our impressions. Does it agree with the Bible? And... um, The Bible also tells us uh, to not be unequally yoked with an unbeliever. So we can be, if we're equally yoked, that means we're both going in the same direction to the same place at the same pace. And so let's put that picture up there. This is what it looks like if you're unequally yoked. Uh, Sometimes... One might be more stubborn than the other and they're pulling in the wrong direction or one just pulling and just dragging the other along, you know, because they don't want to go. I mean, I rode a mule one time and mule did not want to do what I wanted it to do. I can tell you that much. Saw a tree limb and it was low and it went for it to knock me off. I mean, 
they are stubborn and they're smart. They know what they're trying to do. But anyways, so we want to be equally yoked. We'd like to have two oxen there pulling and uh, going together to the same place. And so, so that can be true in our relationships. It can be true in our business relationships. I mean, if we're not equally yoked, in other words, we're not all on the same page, going for Jesus, going all the way, then you're going to have a difficult time of it. And we can pray and do all that we want to do, but does it agree with the Bible? And so that's what you have to make sure you're testing the impressions you get and your leadings from the Lord. You want to make sure we're equally yoked, that we're in agreement, we're going together in Christ. So the second thing then here is do other godly people agree with it? Do other godly people agree with it? The impression that you have, the leading that you're bringing. Talk to other people. Is this God or is it just my want? Is it just me or is it the enemy trying to get me off track? Or is this God? Ephesians 3.10 says his intent was that now through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known. So it's the church's uh, calling. It's the church's uh, enablement through Christ to bring the wisdom of God, the manifold wisdom of God to be made known. He uses the church. He uses you. He uses other individuals. He uses all of us to make his truth known. And what is the church? It's godly people. So have other godly people affirmed what you believe God is impressing upon you? Find those who are further along in the area of life, maybe that God you wanting God to lead you in, in different areas. It, you know, you can look up Proverbs eleven nine. It says the wisdom of the righteous can save you. The wisdom of the righteous can save you. In other words, by their experience, by their walk with Christ, they can tell you, you know, the way you're going is going to lead you to trouble, just like it did in my life, or uh, they know the leading of the Lord in those areas because they've been there. And so those of you that have come through things, that have endured some trouble in your life, and God has saved you, restored you, strengthened you, helped you, God will use that for you to be able to bring forth God's wisdom, God's speaking into other people's lives so they won't have to Endure the trouble that they need not go through. So godly wisdom from others will save you money. Godly wisdom from others will save you frustration, save you from mistakes, save you from heartache. So instead of having trouble hearing from God, perhaps it's to have a new inspired faith to do what God is telling you to do because you've brought it before other godly people and they say yes I believe that God is in this God is uh, is giving you this direction because it matches the word of God it matches what uh, maybe they have seen that God is saying and then the third thing how do we test impressions the third thing is does it match my giftedness now this seems totally contrary. This seems like, well, you know, this is what you want or desire. But you know what? God made us for purpose. God put gifts and callings and talents within us. And so if he gave you that talent and gift, he's not going to lead you to do something you know nothing about. You have no, qual you know, no uh, gifts or talents for. So we could say, does it match who God made me to be? So if God is leading and God has put an impression in your life, then we have to realize, does it match what God has gifted me? It says in Ephesians 2.10, Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So if he's prepared for us to do these good things, and that we're God's creation, God's workmanship. That means he has a plan. And that plan needs to be walked out by his leading. And by him speaking into your heart and life. And he will also guide you through your giftedness. Through what he has prepared for you. 
You are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works. How is that going to play out? How are you going to operate in what God has prepared you to do? And he's prepared in advance for us to do it. So that means planning, doesn't it? That means a purpose. God has a purpose for you to walk in this earth, to be a blessing, to be used of God, to be useful, to create, to produce, to increase, to uh, be a blessing to those around you, for God to use you and be a testimony and a witness for him. So how is God going to do that? He's going to lead you in ways that will promote your talents and giftings and the things you're good at, the things that you have in your life, the wisdom and skills. I mean, we see even the Old Testament, God anointed and gifted and gave skill to those who would make the temple to create the things that natural things that would go into the physical temple of God. And he said that they were given skill and wisdom how to do those things. And so that was just as Wonderful and anointed as anything else. So use what God gave you. Don't try to use what God gave somebody else. Right? So if things aren't going well for you, it could be because what you're doing is outside of your giftedness. Well, I thought God was leading me to do this, but you have no talent for it. So just take an about face, all right? I mean, I used to have a diesel truck. That truck was powerful. It could, you know, tow, it could haul. I mean, it could do some wonderful things, but it was terrible in city traffic trying to find a parking spot. It's big and it doesn't have a good turning radius. I mean, it's just not made for city parking, city things, even though, you know, we would do that. Then we have a, a Camry that, you know, is a lot better for those kind of things. For zipping in and out of, uh, you know, parking lots and parallel parking. And I mean, you can just forget about trying to parallel park the truck. Anyways, um, so maybe if you're like, well, if you're going really slow, maybe it's because you're towing more than you're made for. Maybe you're trying to be a, be a truck and trying to tow this and you are getting nowhere fast. Because you're just not made for that. There are things that come naturally to you and, you and were put into you by God. And that is just as supernatural as getting a, you know, a prophecy or uh, you know, any kind of spiritual thing. That is just as wonderful. And maybe more wonderful because it's not showy. The Bible says we need every part of the body. And those parts that are concealed and no one sees. says are just as important if not more so. Than you know. You know the eye says you know I have no need of you. Uh, you know of the toe or whatever it says. You know the different parts of the body. We need every part. And it's just as supernatural. So you could go to classes to learn how to preach. There are wonderful classes that help you do that, how to be a good speaker, and things like that. But you know that you are called and gifted to do that because you will find that you just have a little bit of preach in you already. It's just in you. You just have a little bit of preach in you. And no amount of schooling or training can make you a preacher if God has not called you to be a preacher. And that's okay because just be what God's called you to be. Just do what God's called you to do. And, and you can test the impressions that you get from God. Is it helping you in that area of your life that he's already given you strengths? A lot of times we want to strengthen our weaknesses. But hey, God's already strengthened someone else for that. Instead, let's promote, let's work on the things that God has given us. Let's, let's hone those. Let's develop those things, those giftings and callings that are within us so that we will get better at what God has gifted us to be and to do. So, listen to others as they will let you know what you are gifted at. Think about that. People can see what you're gifted at and they know what you're not gifted at. Right? And uh, so... Just think about it. You know, I think a new uh, 
a new uh, series or, or whatever of a sing, some of these singing programs are on. Again, just think about the stadiums full of people, literally stadiums full of people who think they can sing. And they're, sometimes they're shocked and destroyed when the judges say, that was horrible. And you can't sing. At least not sing in a professional way that, you know, that they're looking for. We can all sing, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. I mean, you know, the Bible says that unless, unless you praise the Lord, the rocks will cry out. So I'm not going to let a rock out sing me, okay? So let's sing to the Lord Delight ourselves in him, and he will delight himself in you. But we're talking about developing the gift God gave you. And sometimes other people can know, you know what, this isn't what you're supposed to be doing. You're supposed to be doing this over here. Find the sweet spot in your life. Find the things that you're good at. Do those things and enjoy it. Quit looking at what other people are doing and what they think, what you think that you would like to be doing in them. You know, that's just called jealousy and you're just setting yourself up for a hurt and trouble. So is God leading you and impressing this upon you or you just think that this will be good for you? Or is it the enemy, Satan's coming to try to twist things up to get you off track that God has for you? Because where God leads and guides, he provides and when he provides for you, it'll also overflow and to be a blessing for everybody else. God wants to develop what's in you so that you will be a blessing. You know, he said to Abraham, I'm going to bless you so that you'll be a blessing, right? And if you're going away from your giftedness and calling, then that is not what God is impressing on you. He wants you to go in that way and that's okay. So does the impression you have cause you to be more like Christ or does it push you away from your walk with Christ? Is the person you want to marry leading you to Christ or are they pushing you away from Christ? Is the job you're praying about going to make you more like Christ? I know that's a difficult one, right? Um, but is there... Is God leading you and you know that you'll be able to stand strong and be a testimony and a light and maybe there's some other support there in your walk with, with God? And it won't cause you to go against your principles of truths in the Bible. Does your church cause your faith to increase? Are you encouraged? Are you strengthened in your faith in your church? I pray that that's true. Does the college that, that you think you want to go to support your walk with Christ? Or does it cause you to go away from Christ? So that's a tough one these days. But maybe there's some groups there, some Christian groups that will help support your Christian walk, even in the midst of the sea of, of uh, you know, humanity that goes against your faith. Does what you believe God has told you to do, the impression that you believe God is speaking to you, you believe it's from God, does it agree with the Bible? Does it agree with other godly people? And does it match your giftedness? Will others see Jesus in the path that you have an impression to follow? Will others see Jesus in the path that you have an impression to follow? Let's pray. Lord, we pray that you lead and guide us what you've created us to be and to do. That we be a witness and a testimony and a shining light for the glory of God. Lord, lead us and guide us, Lord, that we would hear your voice and that we'd be able to test it and know that it's true and know that it's you. And our faith would soar and, our, and the blessings would, would pour from heaven upon us and that we'd be able to be a blessing in greater measure. Because we've heard your voice and we've listened and we've obeyed. We've not gone astray. We've not gone the way of our own wants and desires that are against your path and your plan. And your calling, your leading, your anointing, and your gifting in us. For you have a purpose that we would be a blessing to all around us. We'd be your voice, even in a dark world. So, Lord, we pray that you would help us 
know you and that we would test it and be sure. But we do know you're speaking. We do know that we can receive wisdom and direction from you. So we call upon it right now. Lord, give us that direction and wisdom. Speak to our hearts and press upon us your path and your plan and your wisdom and your leading, even on the next step and in the next step and further and further, that we might glorify your name and be all that you've called us to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God